Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brit, and today you join me in Dragon Age Origins, where today we'll be exploiting the very game which Todd Howard took a look at and went, I'm gonna go make Skyrim now. And yes, this game is basically Skyrim, but worse in every single regard. But also better in some. I know, it's a mixed bag. But welcome to a game widely regarded as a slightly worse Oblivion clone, where today we'll of course be sitting down and enjoying an absolute plethora of exploits, including unlimited gold, unlimited limited experience and unlimited levels. Oh my, doesn't that just sound fantastic? Now please do remember this game was first released in 2009, so things are going to look a little funky. And also the controls are completely skew whiff. To move the camera around, you have to use the W, S and D keys. I know, it's amazing. Anyway, before we start, let's quickly log into the Dragon Age servers. Email address and password. Oh, I haven't created an account yet. Let's quickly create an account. Fantastic, here we go. Email address. Um, ooh, who are we making this Dragon Age account? Account for today. Well, of course, it has to be Elon Mollusk at Tesla. Dot are you? Question mark. Are we allowed a question mark in the email address? Is this system not going to say no? Anyway, we need to make a password. Well, of course, it's just going to be Tesla. Tesla one two three. Why would you even have a different password? By the way, that's Elon Musk's password to even his bank account. I just thought you guys should know that. Date of birth. When was Elon Mollusk born? Well, it was probably the 69th of Marchery, but I, I, sadly, that's not an option. So we'll go for the 17th of October. October. Date of birth. How far can we go? How far can we? 1945. You know what? We're gonna we're gonna play safe. We're gonna go for 1932. A fine year. A good vintage that year, I hear. Country. <gasps> Amazing. What countries are available? Oh, it's got the Czech Republic. It's not even the Czech Republic anymore. <laughs> but instead, no, no, no. We're gonna go for Chad. Yes, the most Chad-like of countries. Exactly where Elon Mollusk of Tesla are. You would live. Contact me about EA's products, news, and events, and. Emotions. Yes, of course. Why wouldn't Elon Musk want to hear about EA's latest products, news, events, and promotions? That sounds fantastic. Hello there, Elon Musk. By the way, we're releasing a new DLC for Sims 3. Also, we've noticed you haven't installed Origin. Please install Origin. Why haven't you installed Origin? What's this? The following email address supplied was invalid. Please try the email address again. Oh, fine. There we go. That should work. Create account. Yes, Elon Musk at Tesla.com. It works. <gasps> you are now logged into your Dragon Age account. It actually worked. Oh my goodness. This will let you download new content and upload achievement screenshots to your online profile. That's amazing. I can upload pictures of my progress and it gets sent to Elon Musk. My goodness, this is perfect. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's dive into this game. We've got some fantastic Dragon Age contents ahead of us. Now, as fun as it would be to make a new game and create a brand new custom character, it's terrible. The tutorial will last for about four hours, so I don't really have the time to do that. Instead, we're going to resume as my character just after after all of the tutorial stuff has happened. Oh, and the game's crashed. A fantastic start, my indeed. A win for the games of 2009. Other releases in 2009 include Assassin's Creed 2, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, and Left 4 Dead 2, all of which are objectively vastly superior games. Heck, even Halo 3 ODST came out. What an absolute classic. But no, here we are playing Dragon Age Origins. Ah, oh, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I jump into the early point of the video when you were least expecting me that that's right, I am here to tell you about something absolutely fantastic which has happened. The channel, the fantastic community, of which you are an absolutely irreplaceable member of, has managed to reach a ridiculous size of 700,000 people. My goodness, that is absolutely crazy. And in part as a way to celebrate, the lovely people over at the Yorkscast have decided to give me a majestic code that I'm allowed to share with all of you. Until the end of August, the fantastic code T700K will get you an added fantastic 15% off whatever you choose to buy from the Yorkscast shop. It could be my glorious t-shirt, my glorious mug, my glorious tote bag, or just, I don't know, someone else's TT t-shirt. I mean, that's okay too, but what about my mugs? Oh yes. You know, you can put tea in them and it tastes fantastic. It really does. Anyway, back to this fantastic video. And so here we have it, ladies and gentlemen, we're finally in the game. But who is our fantastic hero today? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is none other than than Sir Nigel, the greatest dwarf warrior they have ever seen. But what is the face of this magnificent champion? Well, of course, it is he. 
Just look at this absolute beauty. Is he not amazing? He's mostly fantastic, I know. He's just too perfect. Just look at how amazing he is. He's got this massive nose and also a happy smile. Now, we have basically just finished the tutorial area, meaning Nigel is now a level 3 warrior. However, he is basically useless and has no money. Look, we only have 74 bronze coins, the weakest of the currencies. But we do have some things to sell. So, luckily, we have a quartermaster over here who we can sell items to. Hello there, generic quartermeister dude. Now this guy sells some fantastic other supplies including amazing potions and bombs. I know, you can just buy bombs from random people. Naturally we're going to be doing just that. Oh my. Anyway, we need to make money and we need to make money fast. As you can see we only have 74 copper coins at the moment. Now there is a way to increase our money and that would be to sell these items. For example we have some tattered prison clothes they're valued at 7 bronze coins so we'll just drag them in there to sell them. Success, we've made a bit of money. However, we could then buy our stuff back for 7, okay, so we'll buy it back, and now we're back to where we started with 74 bronze coins. But what if we dragged to sell it, but then also hit right click, and then dropped it over there? Suddenly we're at 88, and then we drag it back. Now we're at 81. Hang on a second, Spiff, when you had these tattered prison clothes in your inventory last time, we only had 74, now we're at 81. It's almost like your money's increased. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, this here is a infinite money exploit. Basically, we have a very expensive fine dwarf blade here what you can do is get ready to drag it and then to sell it and then you let go of it and we're bam suddenly we have double the value of the item of course this has gone into his inventory so we can simply buy it back although whilst we're here we'll also buy a maul and then we'll do the same with the maul so what you want to do is hold left click and then hold right click and then you simply drag it over here and drop and then of course we can just buy it back but of course because we're in majestic dwarf if we're buying back something that we've sold we can buy it back for less look it's only free silver now to buy this maul back fantastic it's ours now the way this works is if you hit sell here, you sell the item. But alternatively, if you drag the item over there, you also sell the item. So effectively, we're doing the same. We're selling it once, but then we're immediately selling it again, like so aka doubling our money. So what we'll do, we'll buy the, our fine dwarven blade back. I thank you. And then once again, we'll sell it. And just like that, we've gone from having hardly any bronze coins to having two straight up gold coins. Certainly something a level 3 scrub nub adventurer that, like Nigel should not have access to, but he's just such a happy little boy. How could you not want him to have access to it? Now the legendary Nigel here, he's not much of a fighter. In fact, he's much more of a noble dwarf, meaning he is suited for the life of trade which we have set before him. Don't worry, we're going to be making him a powerful fighter whether he likes it or not. And of course we'll be doing it the best way we know how. And that is to quite simply buy him the success and victory he's looking for. Because what's fun of actually playing an RPG game where you grind the low level mobs to feel like you have a sense of accomplishment? No, 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 no. That's useless and time consuming. Instead you want the rewarding feeling of buying the most overpowered item which no one has access to. It's that pay to win feeling that absolutely nothing can beat. Anyway, let's go speak to our quarter master. Now his most expensive item would of course be the fine dwarven blade here. It's very nice. However, we're going to be grabbing this battle axe here for 79 silver. That's a lot of silver. Now if we were to try and sell him back the item and of course sell it twice to double our money, make a lot of money back, as you can see it's gone down in value. It's now 9 silver and 99 bronze. That's fine. We'll take that back on board. Hasn't cost us that much to buy. But what you want to do, exit the dialogue, start the dialogue again. As you can see it's still 9 silver and 99. So we're going to sell it back to him and of course doubly sell it back to him. Fantastic. And now you want to talk to him. And suddenly the item's gone back to its original value. Fantastic. So we'll of course be buying this and then selling it back again twice. Lovely stuff. And this can be repeated any number of times with any number of expensive items, like so. I mean, just look at the amount of money we have, it's fantastic. You buy the expensive items and you sell the one for more. Why wouldn't you want such a setup? Now we're going to be grinding this out just a bit until we have enough money to buy all of the fantastically overpowered items which we most definitely should not have access to. Like for example these heavy chainmail boots here, which are definitely going to help us out. We're going to of course sell them back to him, suddenly they're only 6 silver, so we're going to buy the heavy chainmail boots. Effectively how this conversation roughly goes is, I see that he is a heavy chainmail set of gloves that I like, I go, you know what, oh I'll buy those, what is it, 1 gold and 38 silver, no problem, we'll be buying those, so gets added to our inventory, then of course course we go actually you know what I don't think I want the gloves you know what I'll give them back to you but you know what I'll throw in a special offer I'll actually sell it to you twice that's right I'll give you two gloves so there we go we give him two gloves and then he goes hang on a second you didn't give me two gloves you gave me one glove but because you did sell it to me I can't sell it back to you at the same price that would be silly instead I'll sell it to you for 17 silver instead 
So basically we profit on the item by selling two of it and then we finally buy it at a much cheaper cost. Yeah, it just it, it just works. It really does. It really does just work. Oh my goodness. And now we are completely kitted out. But of course if you also want to start duplicating a couple of items then look no further than this lovely injury kit item duplication exploit. If a vendor has two of any items this is where things can get a little wacky. What we are going to do is we're going to buy one of them. So there we go, that's one gold and 39 silver. But then we're going to immediately double sell it back to him. This for some reason results in a pile of injury kits mounting up here from the excess trade, but also his original supply of injury kits getting reset. This can be farmed effectively infinitely for unlimited quantities of gold. And so naturally what we'll be doing is we'll be buying ourselves the massive dwarven battle axe. It's a tier two weapon, a huge upgrade for us, and things are looking good. So there we have it. Suddenly Nigel has seen an absolutely incredible upgrade to his abilities and armor. Also, he's suddenly carrying much, much, much more money. Good stuff, Nigel. Where does he store the money? Probably in that incredibly large, fantastic nose of his. Just look at it. There's so much going on in there. Who knows what knowledge it might contain. Anyway, let's get on with the game as we have more exploits to do. So now on our fantastic journey, we've picked up Alistar, a very smug but fantastic companion who's going to be joining the legendary Nigel Big Nose on his fantastic journey. But first, we need to go do some kind of ritual and then upon doing so, we can join the good guys group. Yes, that's right. The good guys group where we do good things and slay bad monsters. I love how these cutscenes work because you have all the serious mega heroes and then the camera just slowly occasionally pans to Nigel. <laughs> oh, he does not fit in. He really does not. Oh, the cutscene is over. Lovely stuff. Right, so we now have a full group of lads together, Jory, Davuf, and Alistar, and we need to go do some little fantastic questy stuff. So now we're going to head to the Badlands of the Evil Wildlands with our completely OP gear to start bashing up some enemies. But don't worry, once all this extra tutorial stuff is done, we can finally get into the nitty gritty of cheesing the XP system in the game. Ooh, what have we got here? We're getting ambushed by something. Wolves, okay. Well, I mean, that's hardly something to write home about. Right, ooh, almost a one hit there. So close, so close. Right, give me a good hit. Oh, that was a complete miss. That's just disappointing. But anyway, turns out we're quite good at fighting. Didn't even take a single hit of damage. Nigel is happy. Oh wait, here comes more. Right, I want you to do a powerful swing, Nigel. Powerful swing. What do you mean you miss, Nigel? It appears Nigel is the accuracy of a potato attached to a very flimsy elastic band. But at least he tries. Who's <laughs> that great water? <laughs> Okay, imagine this. You're a soldier who's effectively dying and you need someone to help you and you look up and it's just it's just Nigel. Oh, let's bandage him up at least. All right, so we just saved a soldier's life, although I'm pretty sure we ended it prematurely by having him look into the face of Nigel. Oh, I love Nigel. I really do. Oh my goodness. You know, Nigel is amazing. He really is. He honestly deserves some kind of knighthood, but I've handed out enough knighthoods to virtual characters. So I wonder what would happen if we actually got a knighthood for Elon Musk himself, just sent it to his email address. Would he even know that he was a knight of Sealand? Oh my goodness, you know, why not? Why not? I'll buy one last knighthood, the only knighthood from now on, but I will give it to the legendary Elon Musk. If this video somehow manages some kind of stupid quantity of likes, I'm going to say something ridiculous like 30,000 likes and I will buy Elon Musk his very own knighthood for him to enjoy. Anyway, yeet, miss, great. Can you just stop missing, Nigel, please? Oh, this isn't a good sign. You know there's a bad thing coming up when they've suddenly copy and pasted three NPCs and attached them to ropes. Oh no, I can't believe they managed to get the Terry triplets, Terry 1, 2 and 3, have all been caught and captured. Devastating Nigel, we must show them some respect and slay a load of evil goblins in return. Oh, there we go, speak of the devils. Right, it's goblin slaying time. Go Nigel, go! He takes so long to do anything, which is his one downside. Now, each and every single enemy we're killing here is netting us about 27 XP, which isn't really that much in the grand scheme of things. It's actually going to take us quite a long time to level up. I mean, I think we need about 450 to level up. So if only there was some kind of way to level up faster and much easier, which didn't involve actually having to fight anyone. Well, it's funny you should ask that, ladies and gentlemen, because it just so happens I happen to know a way. What's this? Unable to connect to Dragon Age servers. Please try again. <gasps> I just DC'd from the Dragon Age servers. But how's Elon Musk meant to get regular screenshot updates about my progress in game? How is he going to know that the knighthood's on the way? This is devastating. Oh my goodness, and Nigel the Warrior's just leveled up. Look at his happy little face. He's now level four. I mean, he's still not very good, but you know, he's slowly improving. Oh my goodness, it's another cutscene with Nigel. Yes, Nigel. <laughs> no, don't show me your face, Nigel. Oh, Nigel. <laughs> 
just doesn't fit. He really doesn't fit. All right, print screen. I'm sending that one to Elon Musk. Apparently, I think the print screen does take a screenshot, which we can then send to Elon. Ooh. Tell, tell you my name oh, very well. I am Nigel. A pleasure to meet you. <laughs> God, scenes I can't. They're completely stupid. Oh, Elon Musk, are you proud of our sweet baby boy that we share? I like to see this as a creation between the two of us. You know, my incredible Britishness combined with his ingenuity and just the fact that he owns PayPal. <laughs> so now we're doing some kind of joining ceremony to join the good guys gang, where it's all very serious with this oversized mug. You can tell that's... You, that's how you know it's very serious. Pretty sure that mug's larger than Nigel's head. <laughs> no, come on, Nigel. Drink the big cup. Nigel, that is a very strange way to consume. That is fine. <laughs> His nose. Oh, I love these close-up cutscenes. They're too good. Anyway, we need to go on with our exploit. Come on, tutorial. Why aren't you over yet? <laughs> oh, no, Nigel. That's not a pretty look. Seriously, did the game just crash again? It did. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> Oh, I swear, this game is about as stable as a house of cards in an earthquake. Oh well, right, I'll just get it loaded up again. Bloody heck. So here we have the great epic battle of Lord of the Rings. Wait, hang a second, what franchise is this? Yeah, so this is the great big epic fantasy battle which happens in the first couple of moments of the game. So, uh, lo and behold, I don't think it's gonna go well. Because if it went well, there wouldn't be a game. So instead, we're going to have a great epic betrayal which makes all of the heroes very upset. Oh yay, it's epic battle time. Wait, why are the archers standing in- are the archers standing in front of the infantry? They are! Well, this is some Game of Thrones level tactics right here. Yes, position the trebuchets outside side of the walls. That's the best defended position as we know. Yes, the most valuable weapon. Okay, now we're releasing the doggies. Of course, a sound battle strategy. Release doges. I mean, they could have just fired off another volley of arrows, but you know, dogs work too. <laughs> oh no, now the epic charge to leave your easily defendable position, but to instead waltz into an area which can be flanked. Oh my goodness, so many rookie mistakes. I mean, the enemies had trebuchets. Oh no. So there's an epic battle happening down there, which of course we sadly can't see at all. But what we can see is a a bunch of AIs getting absolutely owned. Apparently the one thing that this entire mission hinged upon basically didn't occur and now it's up to us to save the day and save everyone and hopefully it's gonna be up to our legendary hero here Nigel to do just that backed up by his wonderful dream team posse group. Oh and apparently that's enough to level up. Nigel you've done it. Such a powerful boy. Oh and the game crashes again. Nice good game very good game. Hello there ladies and gentlemen we are now back in the game we've advanced a rather large amount of the story and please do not be alarmed by this fantastic appearance on screen. We've arrived in the fantastic village of somewhere somewhere, I don't know. Lovering, yay, Lovering. It's a great, lovely and fantastic place. It's a tiny small town, however, it has a pub and inside the pub is a fantastic, lovely man. Now this fantastic, lovely man, Barlin, he has a lot of items for us to buy. Quite a few indeed, you know what, we'll buy this fantastic lightning rod off of him. Oh my, it's worth so much money, let's sell it back to him. Ooh, selling we're at 14 gold now. Yeah, really you should not be at 14 gold by this point in the game. I mean, look at some of these items. They're worth so much gold. <laughs> oh, goodness, yes, of course, we can't connect to the Dragon Age servers again. Of course, classic. I mean, that's a real shame, considering I really wanted to show Elon Musk some of our fantastic screenshots. Like, I mean, this absolute classic here. This is when Liana joins our cause. Or what about in the Darkspawn Tower? What's this? The Tower of Israfel was overrun? No, no, no. Let's change the personal comments round. Nigel searches for his his father, Elon. Yes, that's right, Nigel is busy searching for his father, Elon. What are we gonna call this? Not the Darkspawn Tower, this is gonna be the Tesla Tower. Fantastic, let's upload this so that lovely Elon Musk should get an update about it. Oh, it's actually uploaded. <gasps> I'm amazed it's worked! <laughs> I love this game. Anyway, what do we do? Well, in this game, there are many quests which you can do. As always in games, quests give you experience. Now, one of these particular quests is that there's a lovely lady out here in Lovering who is able to effectively give you infinite money and infinite experience. You see, this fantastic lady out here, Alison, she has a very important quest for your adventurer, and provided you have at least one skill in trap making, you can do it. Basically, she simply wants you to make traps. Now, when it comes to making traps, you need resources. Now, that might sound scary, like you actually need to go out and farm these resources, but no, no you don't. Instead, you just head inside of this fantastical bar and speak to good old Barlin here. Now, Barlin has a unlimited supply of trap triggers, which are the only ingredient you need to make traps, but of course, they're a tad expensive, but we'll buy as many as we can. A straight 99 of them, you know what, let's buy some more. Fantastic, we'll just keep buying these, it's no problem whatsoever. You might notice our money going down, but don't worry, we'll earn our money back from this. Now, you might be wondering, 
why am I doing all of this? What do I have to actually earn from doing these money exploits? Well, basically there's an area in the game, which we're going to be heading to soon, which contains an item available for purchase, which many regard to be the strongest item in game. The single greatest sword that you can ever wield. Naturally, we're going to get it. Anyway, we need to make some traps for good old Allison here. How do you make traps? Well, we have 396 trap making ingredients, and it only takes one ingredient to make a trap. So we're just going to hold down the create item and make an absolute metric ton of traps. For every three traps we give Allison here, the quest technically comes to an end and we are given a reward. The reward you are given is 100 experience as well as 50 silver coins, meaning we'll actually turn a profit of around about 45 silver every time we hand in this quest. But anyway, let's take a look at our experience. As you can see from our experience bar, we have 1,372 experience of 4,500, basically meaning we need an extra 1,500 experience until we reach the next level. This can of course be achieved by simply handing in this quest 15 more times. So how do you do that? I have the traps for you, hit escape, escape, and then click on her again. Escape, one, escape, escape, job done, and we just keep farming this. So ladies and gentlemen, I'll keep doing this and I'll get back to you once it's all done. Now if for some reason you don't really have the moral compass to want to actually do the item duplication when it comes to trading, and as a result gaining infinite money, the other way you can do it is of course this quest. It does take a little bit longer, especially on console, but on PC you can effectively just mash the escape and one key and you can just absolutely speed your way through this mission. And as you can see we've already leveled up. We are now a fantastic level 8. Of course now we need 5000 experience to go up to the next level so we'll do just that. Also when we get this experience it doesn't just go to us it goes to every single person in the party. Oh my this certainly can't be exploited can it? There we go now we've suddenly leveled up once again but my oh my we still have a lot of traps to go through. Yeah we have exactly 150 left to hand in. That's a lot of levels. And also, our money keeps going up. We are now at 51 gold, ladies and gentlemen. This quest pays very well. If you think about it, every time we hand in this quest twice, we gain a gold coin. Hence why our money is suddenly skyrocketing very quickly. Now the money we actually need to buy the most expensive and most powerful sword in the game is around about 89 gold coins, I do believe, so that's what we're roughly saving up for. Although in actuality, we could at any point just run and exit the town and then go buy it because we can use our fantastic trade money duplication glitch in order to hit that even faster. But I really like getting experience. And there we have it, I've managed to clear out my entire inventory of traps. Oh my goodness, we now have 79 gold and we are about to level up into level 9. And now of course we're now level 8 Nigel, we can increase our strength even more up to 33. Bearing in mind you do need about 31 strength to be able to even hold the most powerful weapon in the game. There we go, we're now going to be an immensely brave boy. Fantastic Nigel, what a power. Powerhouse. Now, in the world, there is one magical location. It is called the Party Camp. Basically, it's almost like your hub point. You can keep going back to it, and it never changes. Now we're getting attacked by some scrub nobs here, some who are trying to take out the legendary Nigel, but sadly it's just not going to work. Yes, the party camp is a very important area because it basically has a trader who has the most powerful weapon in game. Naturally, we're going to be stealing that. Goodness, my strength has gone into ludicrous numbers, and we're now doing 61 damage with each swing on occasion, considering we used to be doing 10. Four. These levels have really helped. Oh, and here we go. Basically, as part of the wonderful quest to get a trader into your party camp, you need to go over to here in Lovering and save this trader and his son from some Darkspawn. So that is exactly what we're going to do. Of course, this time, Darkspawn, not very much for threat because, you know, we're completely and utterly overpowered. There we go, we've defeated all of the evil people and we managed to level up at the same time. There we go. Brand new level 9 Mega Warrior Nigel. What a guy. And there we go. We've just saved Bodan Fedic, the owner of the most powerful powerful weapon in game. And then because we managed to save this guy, he is now going to be able to travel over to our party camp. So what we're going to do, drop down a save game, and hopefully, provided everything works, we can simply exit into the world map. And there we go, because we've now exited the area, we've ended up in the glorious party camp. Oh my, it's fantastic. And as you can see, <gasps> It's Bowden, the bloke we saved. And of course, because he's now here, we can trade with him. And here it is, the most powerful weapon in game, the Vasarly. This weapon requires, this is a tier 7 weapon requiring 31 strength to even lift. It is technically only one-handed, but it is absolutely ridiculous. It provides plus 2 strength, increased melee critical chance, increased everything, it's just amazing. And also it has 3 slots to be upgraded, which just makes it even more wacky. Now, naturally, as you can see, we don't quite have enough 
enough money to purchase it just yet, but luckily there are a couple of ways we can get close to it. Basically we can buy, say, the Tome of Physical Technique here, and then sell it back. Each time we'll do this we'll gain about free gold, which is very good, and we'll slowly work our way up. So what you repeatedly want to do is buy the Tomb of Physical Technique and Arcane Technique, and then sell them both back twice, and that way we'll generate our money up even faster. So we just keep repeating this process, and each time we do this we gain about 6 gold. And finally, as you can see, we have enough money to buy the Vasali, the most expensive weapon in game, and also the game's greatest. I mean, this is a weapon made of dragon bone itself. It's ridiculous. So actually we're going to purchase it, but then of course I like to make my money back, so I'll sell it back immediately, and then buy it back, and then sell it back, and then buy it back, and then sell it back. And as you can see, we are just absolutely profiting from this at a ridiculous degree. It we gain 21 gold every single time we do this, meaning we're soon going to reach a point where gold has basically lost its complete value. So you know what, I'll see you back at 1000 gold, which is more money than you will ever need in the entirety of this game. And there we have it, 1000 gold as well as the most powerful weapon in game. Now something that is quite unique about good old Bowden here is that his wares actually duplicate, and by that I mean they exist twice. But you only get this opportunity once, basically if you want to duplicate the Versailles, what you need to do is you need to buy it now, then exit the camp and return to the camp. If you manage to do this then, and my goodness fantastic news for you, you're going to end up with two copies of the most powerful weapon in game. But anyway, we're more cheesy than that, we're also going to pick up some of the most overpowered items in game, including this fantastic spell ward. I mean, it's great, it increases our willpower, our health regeneration, spell resistance, plus 10% chance to dodge all attacks. I mean, that's pretty ludicrous. And also we'll grab the Dwarven's Merchant Belt, as that basically means any time we gain money in the game, it's increased. Now that's very nice. So I've just purchased all of the items that I like the look of, which I'm more than happy to see duplicated. So I've picked up three of the most powerful runes in game, as well as a couple of interesting tombs which I like the look of. So we've managed to purchase everything that I want, including the most powerful weapon in game. Let's just quickly look at what that looks like. See it might not look like much other than a nice small axe, but trust me, phew, this thing is going to absolutely cheese the entire game for us. Anyway, job done, we've managed to purchase everything we like the look of. So what we're immediately going to do is travel to the world map, and in the world map we're going to immediately travel back to Lovering. This is simply so that we exit the party camp and then we're immediately going to travel back into it. So there we go, we head back into the party camp. And now that we're back in the party camp, for some reason this only occurs on your first return to the party camp, but Bodden here has his entire inventory completely and utterly refreshed. Suddenly you'll notice there is a second Versailles, even though we have one on our back. Very interesting, so naturally we will be grabbing one of those and selling it back because it costs a ridiculous amount of money. But most importantly, we have the interesting tomb of arcane technique. Oh yes, and this is where the duplication can begin. You see, technically there should only ever be one tomb of arcane technique in this game. However, what you can do is simply sell a tomb of physical technique back to him, then buy the other tomb of physical technique off of him, then double sell it back to him. Suddenly there's two of them. Then what you want to do is buy one back and then sell it back twice. Now we suddenly have three tombs of physical technique. This process can then be repeated so that there are now four, five, and six tombs of physical technique. Naturally what we're going to do is buy five off of him. Now the reason why is because the tomb of physical techniques is an item which you're only ever meant to read once, and the reason why is because it gives you one point to spend on any talent or spell. After that, it's rendered useless, making it exceedingly useful. So we're going to use it once, then we're going to use it twice, and then three times, and four times. And by doing so, we've managed to level up our talents four times. This allows us to basically polish off most of the skill tree. And of course, this can be repeated any number of time if you just want an unlimited quantity of skill points. But of course, what about the strongest weapon in game? What can we do with that? Well, of course, we're just going to duplicate it. As you see, we have two Versailles here, so we're going to sell one of them back, and there it is, and then we'll sell the other one twice, and then we buy one, and then sell it back twice. Oh, sadly, it hasn't worked. We can only ever have two Versailles, oh well. Now, the advantage of this is if you manage to respect your character all the way down the talents tree, up to dual weapon mastery, you can wield the most powerful weapon in game in both hands. Bearing in mind, this is a weapon you're only ever meant to have one of, but you can have two if you really want it, turning your character into something that physically cannot be defeated, and that is basically Nigel. Just look at him. He's fantastic. I mean, his attack is now 83. That's incredible. I mean, his damage is just absolutely insane at the moment. This man is an absolute unit. He can take hits and he can absolutely dish them out. He's amazing. And of course, if you then want to start enchanting our completely overpowered weapon with even more overpowered runes, what you can do is talk to the lovely younger son here of our fantastic trader friend, and amazingly, he's one of three trained enchanters. So we're going to make him equip our weapon with the three most powerful 
runes in the entirety of the game. The Grandmaster Lightning Rune, Frost Rune, and the Slow Rune. Basically, every time we hit an enemy, they are immediately slowed, shocked, and frozen. Quite a powerful combination indeed. So there we go, Nigel has just become the most overpowered man in existence. What a powerful boy, just look at him, he's amazing. Now, on our fantastic journey to apparently the next location, we've come across some kind of battle. Oh yes, we've been attacked by bandits, but fear not for bandits, they're useless against the mighty Nigel. Nigel, have at thee. Oh my goodness, Nigel, what are these attacks? Oh my, Nigel, he's too powerful. He can't even be stopped. My goodness. Well, he freezes enemies, he shocks them, he does everything. And of course, if you remember, if you manage to level up your two-handed skill high enough, if you don't want to take a shield, you can instead have two of these weapons in hand, meaning whatever damage we do, we can just completely double it. Meaning Nigel would probably end up doing about 80 damage in each swing, which is of course ridiculously overpowered. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that's how at level whatever you want to be, you can defeat the final boss. With a good bit of manipulative trading and level manipulation. Anyway, as always, ladies and gentlemen, I've been the Spiffing Brit, this has been Nigel on his fantastic journey to please his father Elon Musk. If you have enjoyed what you've seen then make sure to do give the video a like it is as always greatly appreciated and hey why not dive down into the comment section and say hello and also do your part to get Nigel just one step closer to meeting his father. As always a huge thank you to each and every one of my majestic patrons. There's been a lot of you fantastic new people who've cropped up over the last month and I just want to be the first one to formally say hello welcome and thank you very much indeed. Each and every one of you no matter how large or small are absolutely fantastic thank you very much and if you're sat there wondering what video you'd like to watch next then look no further than this one on screen now it's been handpicked by myself to be absolutely perfect for you trust me if you enjoyed this one you're gonna love that one anyway ladies and gentlemen i've been the spoofing brit and i'll see each and every single one of you in the next one have an absolutely lovely day and goodbye for now